Nazi scum. Get that car get that dog away from here. Fire 240, uh, waiting for the dust to clear right now. This is the kind of warfare that Sun Tzu warned against. It's the endless war. And he said, no nation has ever benefited from prolonged warfare. So, how can the people at West Point who teach Sun Tzu not be listening to Sun Tzu? I think there's a very serious disconnect. with. I try not to criticize the military all that much. I know that there are people who strongly believe that the that it's you know you have to support the troops and everything like this, uh, but I think there's a disconnect within the military between people you know doing their duty so to speak or, or as they call it doing their duty, and individual human beings saying to themselves, if I continue obeying orders and doing exactly what I'm told. I'm in the process of destroying the very thing that I've sworn myself to protect. And I think that's the disconnect that's happening right now in the, in the U.S. military. Yeah, and there's an even bigger disconnect, I think, in the, in the hearts of the American people in many cases, where you just have to assert this knee-jerk reaction that automatically someone who joins the military is doing good stuff. I mean, there was an element of truth in that 15 years ago, but this is a different America. It has changed dramatically. And there are people who were overseas for longer than me that have seen it much better than I've seen it. I think it's Chris, Chris Shays. Chris, uh, Shays, Chris Shays. I'm trying to remember the name of this um, reporter, I think, with the New York Times, who had been overseas for about 20 years, for instance, since, you know, around 92 until recently. And he... He goes on and on about it. I mean, how he cannot believe this is the same country that he left, you know, to do his work overseas uh, in 1992. And I think the people who live here, it's changed more, more, it seems like a slower type of change when it's happening day by day as opposed to coming back after 20 years like Rip Van Winkle. And it's just it's in a dramatic change. It is it is the change from good to evil, practically. I mean, I just I cannot I cannot get my mind around how decent the country was in the '90s compared to what it is today. I still support, to some extent, a lot of what the federal government did in the '90s. I don't like the funding mechanism, but um, I can't really completely fault a lot of the things that they did. I I just think of myself as like a loyal 1990s American, right? <laughs> Stuck into this dystopian America that was, that was uh, born out of, of the original. Uh, we have about two minutes left in this segment before we break off for a commercial. So it, it, I would do injustice to my listeners if I didn't talk more about um, the Ridley Report, what it is you do up there in New Hampshire and... Uh, really how fun it is to watch a Ridley Report. If you've never gone to YouTube and you've never watched a Ridley Report, uh, I don't know how to explain it other than fun. It's Dave, you just engage your viewer and bring them right into your world, and your sense of humor um, is so bizarre and wonderful at the same time. Uh, I just really appreciate watching your YouTube videos. Fun. Well, that's like the, that's the second nicest thing anyone's ever said about the Reader Report. I appreciate that. My body! My property! You've seen the dramatic liberty arrests in Keene, New Hampshire. Now see 111 reasons why you should move there and reinforce these gutsy activists. Keen's advantages are compelling. For details, visit freekeen.com.